Hello dear SimRaces fellows, welcome to the second video of the CSL DD extension development. Uh, in the first video you could see me uh, making this 3D printed part. This is the support for the extension with the bearing. So designing this part was really challenging and I really wanted to be a nice and good product for you to have. And in this video I'm going to make uh, this part that I 3D printed for now, just to see how it would look and how it would fit out of aluminum. And the first problem is that this part that I saved for this extension is a bit too short, so I need to use this one, and this one is slightly larger. It's going to be made on the lathe first, and then I'm going to go to our CNC machine, and I'm going to machine out this part right here, and I'm going to machine out these holes where I need to tap some threads and I also need to take care of this side because there is some machining right here. So pretty complicated part, the most complicated extension so far. So let's see how it will go. All right, so the first thing I need to do is cut the piece to the correct size and for this I'm using my DeWalt saw with the carbide blade and yeah, it's really nice and cuts everything really precise and fast. All right, now I can go to the lathe with this piece and now I realize that I need to use my counter jaws for this piece. This is just a second set of jaws that come with every chuck and with these jaws you can grab material that is a bit wider. Now I need to drill a centering hole and for this I am using this centering drill bit. And this is a very important part of the process because this hole will be the center of the part for the entire production. And now I just need to remove this material from this part and make it a bit thinner. And for now I'm not going to the exact dimension I need for this part, but I am going very close to the final dimension. Now I'm just turning the part around to finish the other side of the part and now I can use my normal jaws for the rest of the job. And this part that goes into the centering hole is called live rolling center and it is used to support the part because without it the part could vibrate and cause all sorts of trouble. And now I can flatten this side of the part. And now I'm making this part that will go into the extension and tolerances here are pretty important because we need to have this part fitting perfectly inside the plastic shaft of the CSL DD base. So I'm going to the dimension I think it might be correct for a tight fit and I'm going to check it right now. And as you can see it goes in but it's pretty tight and I have to use a little bit of force to push it in. I think this would be fine but still for an average user if it would go in just a bit easier would be perfect. So I'm going back to the lathe and I'm going to remove just a little bit of material and now I can check it again. You can see that now it goes in a bit easier and I think now it's perfect. Okay now, back to the lathe. So now I can remove this uh, material here and now I can get to the exact dimension that I need for this part. And this way I am sure that everything is perfectly centered. Now I can remove the live roll center and also finish this side of the part. Alright, so for the next operation I can move to the CNC milling machine and the first operation is to find the center of this part and for this I am using the 3D sensing probe so you can see that the milling machine is touching the other part of the circle and finding the center. The center position is where the CNC program will start. And now we can just enjoy the process of CNC milling.
now I can get back to the lathe and uh, next operation is drilling this hole in the center of the part and I have to admit this is one of the most annoying operations I have to do because it really takes a lot of effort to drill the holes in this part as you can see first time drilling with a smaller drill bit now I'm just uh, making this uh, part of the hole looking nicer and uh, yeah chamfering the inner part of the hole and at this point I'm just marking up to where I need to make the cut and now I'm making this part of the extension this part of the extension does not need to be that thick and yeah this part of the extension really needs to be as thin as possible so you can lower your screen as much as you can and have more room to do it so basically the thinner this part can be the better and now I'm making the seat for the bearing and at this point I made a mistake and from the previous operation I had a broken cutter and now you can see that uh, this broken cutter left some marks on the part these two lines in the center and as you can see I still have around 3 tenths of material I can remove so I'm hoping there's enough material I can remove to make this line disappear and when making tight tolerances like this it's uh, really a good practice to make a lots of measurements and checks if everything is all right and when you come close to the measure uh, the best practice is to try on the part itself and I'm trying to put in the bearing but I still see that it's pretty hard to go in so I'm going to remove just a little bit more of material and then I can try again and just repeat this operation until I get the perfect fit so at this point I think I still have this problem that the first uh, broken knife made and the surface is pretty uneven as you can see and when I try the bearing the first part goes in but the last part does not and now I'm just making a little little tiny tiny super tiny last pass to make the bearing fit and of course when I try it I overshoot the dimension and now it's a little bit too loose so yeah at this point this part is scrap and uh, I cannot sell it but this being a prototype there is one trick I can do to save this part and it is with this tool and this tool is like a gear it pushes itself into the material and thus making it uneven and uh, enlarging the final diameter of the part and when I try the bearing I think now it's almost perfect so maybe just a little bit tiny touch with the sandpaper and it will fit perfectly and for the next operation I'm using this larger jaw that is held by the smaller jaw and I need to do this because this diameter is too small to be pushed into the smaller jaw and uh, the part would stick out too much this would make the part definitely vibrate too much for this last operation of drilling this hole and I really need to have a tight tolerance on this side of the part and this hole also needs to have tight tolerances to make a perfect fit with the QR so first time drilling it with this huge drilling bit this will be just a rough drill and then I can and make a fine drill make the hole a little bit larger with the carbide cutter so like with every tight tolerance the procedure here is the same make the cut measure adjust make the cut again then measure again and repeat the process until the part is done all right so we are getting to the last part of this build and this is the CNC milling and uh, first I position the part and I orient it correctly and then I use the 3D probe again to find the center in the X direction and then the probe also search the center in the Y direction and to repeat again this is so that the CNC machine knows where to start and I define the zero position on the top center of the part now I can remove the 3D probe and put the milling bit inside and the last thing I need to do before I can start the CNC program is to define the zero for the Z direction and I do this manually for now I just put the CNC machine down until the bit almost touches the part and then I can start
so the part is done i hope to enjoy that and the only thing left to do is to assemble this on the fanatec clc ldd base and as you can see i'm starting with pushing the usb cable in and the next step is to push the extension through these two plastic parts so the first part is the original fanatec part and the second plastic part is the 3d printed part you receive with the extension now you push the bearing inside after that you can put this original collar from Fanatec in this position and put this ring that will also come with the extension. Now you can push the USB-C cable through the extension and push the extension into the shaft. And in this step you should mind the orientation of the extension so it needs to look like this. This notch here needs to be here and the extension needs to be mounted in this direction. Now you can tighten the original Fanatec collar and make sure it looks like this, the extension cutout and the collar cutout needs to align. And now you can push the wiring inside, this is the wiring for the front button where you can power on or power off your base and now you can push the entire assembly inside. Turn the base around, put this protection for the wiring in place and connect the connector. Now you can return the back cover and tighten the bolts. You can now place the longer bolts supplied with the extension and tighten them. And now you can put the QR in, connect the USB-C cable through this opening on the extension and finally you can tighten the QR using these supplied grab screws. And that's it for this video, I really hope you liked the production of the CSL DD extension. In the next video I'm going to finish the last touches on the extension, like the cover for this cable hole right here, there will be a cover with my logo on it. What I need to do now is put this extension through some testing and probably in the next video I will put the test results and if everything goes well this product should be on the market very soon. So definitely consider subscribing and maybe even liking this video to stay in the loop for the development of this product and every future product or production video that might come in the near future. Stay customized.